Um, you've talked about exercise before. Why is exercise so important? How do we know that exercise is so important now as, as a real uh, significant way to lower your, um, your risk of getting Alzheimer's? Well, there have been numerous epidemiology studies uh, showing that uh, exercise is protective. And then there have been actual trials, you know, um, that, that have been used um, to see if exercise could help decrease risk of Alzheimer's. So, you know, epidemiology studies only go so far, but they give you a clue that something might be good. But I think the real hardcore data came years ago from Sam Sosodia at the University of Chicago, who's on our research consortium. Mm -hmm. And he showed that if you gave mice running wheels and uh, cages and let them exercise, and he also had them with bigger cages and they could run around, that they had less amyloid. These are, these are Alzheimer model mice, <clears throat> so they're making amyloid in the brain. And if they were, if they were allowed to exercise, they had less amyloid. Mm -hmm. And um, then he was able to know who was exercising and who wasn't because they have these infrared lights on at night. And it turned out that the ones who exercised had less amyloid and the ones who sat around and watched them had more amyloid. What about sleep? Sleep is um, so now considered pretty important, is it not? So as David Holtzman on our research consortium, yeah. who first showed that while you're in deep sleep, you turn off the amyloid beta production. <coughs> and that sleep could protect against the amyloid in that way. It's also in deep sleep that short-term memories that you just got during the day or yesterday get consolidated into becoming longer-term memories. Mm. So memory consolidation. Well, all these things happen in what's called slow-wave sleep or delta, where the brain's in a delta state. Mm -hmm. To get to that slow-wave sleep, you have to get a lot of sleep because it takes a while to get there. Mm. So if you're just napping or, you know, sleeping four or five hours, you, especially as you get older, you may be missing a very important part of your sleep. The other thing about sleep is that, in general, it was, it was recently found um, that, in general, a lot of gunk that builds up in the brain gets cleared away. Mm. So during sleep, the, there's this process where it looks like, according to the newest data, the brain actually shrinks a little bit and squeezes the gunk out to get it exuded out of the brain and down into, into your spinal fluid or into your plasma of your blood. So it's when the brain cleans itself. It's, so if you want proper brain hygiene, so to speak, you need to sleep. And you, is there a connection between having a stroke and Alzheimer's disease? So the thing is when you have a stroke, even if it's unnoticed, like a mini stroke, um, this creates damage in the brain. And that damage, if it's in a certain part of the brain involving learning and memory and cognition, can lead to a temporary dementia due to the stroke. And then the brain slowly heals. But what can also happen is because you have that initial damage from a stroke, just like having an initial headbang or many headbangs on the football field or having a bomb blast in, in the war you know, as a soldier, um, you've created an initial site of injury and if it's, if it's pretty intense, um, even after you've healed that area and you're no longer suffering from cognitive issues just post-stroke, mm -hmm. then you may have already initiated amyloid and tangle formation mm. through what's called a neurovascular insult. And once that process starts with amyloid and tangles and then the tangles can spread, you might have started initiating the disease process. So a stroke, um, can potentially initiate, doesn't have to, depends on where it is, but a stroke can potentially initiate Alzheimer's downstream beyond just the cognitive issues that occurred post-stroke immediately. Is that that's, so that's why we have, uh, on our research consortium, we have uh, Vetsa Zoklovic, who's, a, who's an expert in how neurovascular events like strokes contribute to Alzheimer's disease. And is that why we say that there is such a connection between heart health, you know, keeping yes. so exer the, the exercises you already talked about and eating healthy, all the things that we've been talking about for decades and decades about maintaining good heart health, we, uh, cardiovascular health, that there's a real a direct connection between that and, and Alzheimer's. Yeah, so especially with diet, what's good for the heart, good for the brain, it, it particularly through this because you're, you're minimizing the, the, a neurovascular event in the brain like ischemia, hypoxia, some type of stroke. But exercise, for example, goes further. I mean, exercise also causes new 
nerve cells to be born mm. in a part of the brain that's particularly affected in Alzheimer's, the, the short-term memory part of the brain called the hippocampus. The hippocampus is particularly affected in Alzheimer's. And so growing new nerve cells there can be useful. And mm. exercise also induces that. So a lot of people don't know whether Alzheimer's is a fatal disease or not. I think mainly because so many people get the disease and then die of something else along the way. But the truth is, it is ultimately a fatal disease if you live long enough to get to the end stages. Isn't that right? Yeah, I mean, Alzheimer's can last uh, 8 to 17 years. And patients usually die because they're bedridden and their immune systems begin to become compromised. Um, and their lungs can fill with fluid. So I think the most common cause of death in an Alzheimer's patient is pneumonia. Um, just because of, you know, um, being bedridden and it takes its toll. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's why also we don't truly know how many Alzheimer cases there are because we don't know how many people are dying at home of pneumonia who were suffering from Alzheimer's who never went to a doctor. So it makes it very difficult to know exactly how many cases there are because no one, you don't usually see on a death certificate the death was due to Alzheimer's. It will say the death was due to pneumonia. Mm -hmm.